Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Chris. Um, <coughs> I'm not a farmer, um, but, but I grew up on a farm. And um, we had a sign much like this one um, on our farm um, because uh, we're not big fans of postcodes in the village where I live. Um, they generally don't get you to the right place. Um, and as far as I can work out, this is a problem shared um, by a lot of people. Um, this is an aerial shot of, of our farm. You can see that the postcode, um, well, the one that we certainly moved to now, does point to the right place into the farmhouse. But there's obviously some other buildings there where we have people who work. We all share a postcode, which means my elderly mother gets many, many deliveries um, for 14 barbecues and things she hasn't ordered, which are for the people around the corner. And she spends an awful lot of her time directing people to various points on the farm because addresses and postcodes aren't really um, set up for it. Um, this is another part of our farm um, where we, there's, there's two buildings on the right you can see, which when I kind of called up the uh, NFU to, um, to get some insurance, um, he asked for the postcode, which actually points to where the red pin is on the left. He said, oh, I can see there by the stream. Is there a flood risk? And I said, no, absolutely nowhere near the stream. There's no flood risk. And um, you sort of go around in circles with the insurers trying to locate um, somewhere. And this is 2017, and we still are using postcodes for vast expanses of lands where they're really not um, intended. Um, similarly, if you have a, a tree that someone needs to go and do some work to, uh, somewhere like this, how do you actually explain to them where that is um, and where to go to? It's remarkably unstraightforward, um, even, even with the tools that we have. Um, now, this, this is not uh, just a problem limited to the countryside. Um, I have a major issue with addresses, even in cities. Um, I guess in the 1800s or whenever someone went around labeling London with street names, uh, they decided to name many different roads, Church Road, um, and some of them in the same postcode. And I just don't think it's how you would approach the problem for, uh, if you were doing this now. And it's created all sorts of confusion for everybody every day, the, the duplicated street names that we have um, around everywhere. Um, and this is not also a problem just limited to England. In fact, England is probably the best addressed country in the world, even with all of these problems. This is uh, Rio de Janeiro's most densely populated area. This is what the Google map looks like, but actually this is what uh, the real story is. Um, and if you're one of the people who lives here, you definitely have a problem um, explaining where you live uh, to anyone uh, trying to get there. Um, in many places in Africa, this is a side of a house in Ghana where they've tried to implement address systems, having never had any. They've tried three times. So basically, they keep coming to houses, putting things on the side, um, and actually none of these have worked. All of, them, all of the attempts have been abolished. So the person who lives here just has a sort of graffiti side of the house, but none of, nothing actually means anything. You can't tell anyone it or, or put it into a map. Um, so yes, I think addresses are, are non-optimal. Yes, I grew up on a farm, but I don't work in farming. I actually went into the music business, and um, I did that for 10 years. We, we produced events uh, around the UK, around the world. And my problem was trying to give postcodes and addresses to 50 people saying, please turn up at 4 o'clock, um, and hoping for the best that they did. Um, actually, they didn't. Um, so we often had to get to uh, buildings like this. You give people the address, they will for sure turn up at where the pin is, with the loading entrance is actually around the back. Um, and this caused me all sense of um, frustration. Um, so what I tried doing was solving this by saying, let's forget addresses, forget postcodes. Everyone's going to use GPS coordinates. And I'm going to press this down to everyone and say, you have to use this system. Because what you may not know is that you can put in longitude and latitude into your TomTom -tom or car or smartphone. It's just incredibly clunky, um, and, and it looks something like this. Um, so I tried getting people to do this, but actually, guitarist called up and said, dude, where's the degree sign on my phone? I don't know what to do. Um, I've got to put a comma in. Um, and um, in Italy, we had a, a, a big wedding at a villa. Uh, the, the truck driver brought everything out from the UK, used the latitude and longitude, called, said he'd arrived. I was standing at the entrance, said, you haven't arrived. And we kind of went back and forth. And it turned out he mixed up a four and a five in the latitude. So he was now in north of Rome. I was now south of Rome. But he was on the perfect longitude. Um, but <laughs> with all of the equipment. <laughs> If only it weren't true. Uh, and it was a really stressful day uh, because of it. Um, and another day, uh, we had a keyboard player who called up and said, Chris, please don't panic, but we may have just sound checked to the wrong people's wedding. Um, <laughs> so these are all the problems for the events industry. I don't know if anyone has, has ever dabbled or have lets out barns and such like, but these are very real um, problems. So um, I had to think about this with a friend of mine. And we, we decided a slightly unorthodox 
way around this. We basically laid a grid of three meter squares around the whole world. And instead of naming each one with a sort of really long number like a latitude and longitude, we did a bit of maths and said, well, actually, there's enough combinations of three words from the dictionary, so like table, chair, spoon, that you can go around the whole world from like top of Alaska to the bottom of New Zealand and everything in between. And you call your first square table, chair, spoon, the next one toffee branch pyramid, the next one wardrobe, um, spoons, flooring. Sorry, I have to think of three words all day. Um, and there are literally enough combinations of three words you can go around the whole world. And to me, that just seemed eminently easier um, and more sort of musician-proof, guitarist-proof than trying to get everyone to use the, the long sequences of numbers. Um, so that's basically what we did. Um, so you have a system like this where you say, well, if, if all of our three meter squares have three words, um, then this is what I can communicate to people and say, just show up at gazed across like. Anyone can type that in, and actually this might be a bit simpler. Um, and the great thing about it is that with words, you can, you can communicate it how you like. I can call someone up and say it. I can write it on a scrap of paper and, and give it to somebody. I can remember it, importantly, or I can just type it and um, communicate it digitally. It, it kind of just transcends anything, and it's just ultimately simple. So we decided, well, this shouldn't be an English language-only thing that we've developed. Um, the, the world's a big place, so we have 14 languages that we've actually done this for so far, and there's probably another... 10 to 15 languages which are going to be coming out soon. So you can use anywhere in the world. You can use three French words, three English words, three Swahili words. Um, there's, a, there's a whole load of different languages that we offer so that people can do this absolutely anywhere. Um, one really important thing when we did it, we decided that we didn't want to have the situation in my truck driver in Italy where he, he kind of thought he was going to the right place but didn't because he made a small mistake. So what we do is we put... Uh, table, chair, lamp in Sydney, Australia, table, chair, lamps in New York. So if you make a typo um, and you know, Google Maps then says, right, set off and take the ferry for 83 hours, you know you've probably got it wrong, as opposed to if they're really near each other and then someone goes to the wrong place. We think you should never end up in the wrong place and the app should intelligently correct you. Um, also, we are relatively straightforward about how we distribute the words. Uh, we have more users in towns and cities where we give simple words. We have less users in the Atlantic Ocean, so we put very long words there. And if you look at Antarctica, you'll probably find hydraulics, conscientiously, dodecahedron is a three meter square we've named in the Antarctic. Um, but where you live should be easier. So if you do want to find out the three words that we've named your house or your farm or your entrance, which we have, um, you just get an app called What Three Words in the App Store. You download it, you can put in your address, and you zoom in, put satellite view on, and you literally move the map every three meters, and it will keep updating your three words. So if you find that you live at banana, spoon, fork, then you absolutely do. You cannot change that. It's fixed. Um, what you can do is perhaps find another three meter square on your driveway, but if you want people to come to the entrance of your property, you should find that front door area, and those are your three words. If you want them to show up at the tree around the back, then you move the map to the tree, and that's got the three words uh, for that. So uh, having a look at the app's a pretty simple way of just getting to grips with it. So um, we got that far, which is kind of an interesting idea, three words for the world. Um, how do we make this a business? So um, we give the app away for free, and there's a, there's a website with a map which does exactly the same thing, but we have a way that if people want to use this system um, at scale, then they can do so, and they pay a license fee um, for it. We also have a not-for-profit arm for people um, who use it for charitable purposes. So as a couple of examples, um, we actually have what three words integrated into a few different things. So this is the NavMe app, and this is the world's biggest offline navigation app. So if you live in a village where your phone basically has the big cross or something which says no signal, I would highly recommend you download NavMe because it downloads your whole country's map and you never have to go online um, again, N-A-V-M-I-I. -I. And it's got what three words built into NavMe so you can use it um, anywhere you like. Um, the UN have built what three words into their disaster relief data collection app. They basically take photos, it adds the three words, it goes back to Switzerland, and then they process it. It just means that when people are out uh, in these areas, with most of which don't have addresses, they can get aid to the right place. Um, the Red Cross have been using us in the Philippines to help coordinate relief efforts there. Um, lots of really, really serious use cases where you've got total um, unaddressed areas um, that you're working in. Um, we're in a cycling app called Beeline for any cyclists who want to go somewhere specific. You can just get Beeline, it, it then has a little device on your bike, and it will take you to a three-meter square. Um, 
But we thought, okay, this is great. We've got a whole bunch of these integrations, and we have a, a business of the starting, but how do we really reach scale? So um, I met a guy at a conference um, who was from Mongolia, and he said, we've got a really large country, and we've got basically no addresses. Um, you should come to Mongolia. Um, so I did. And um, we thought, how can we make it work? This is the inside of your average Mongolian home. Um, the problem is this is the outside of your Mongolian home, um, which for the Mongolian Postal Service is a serious problem um, because they have to deliver mail around the whole country, and it's very difficult um, if, if you're trying to describe on an envelope where the red house is. So, um, of course, we have three words which we now can provide to them, um, and we said, look, we could do this in Mongolian, and we could actually make you a business viable solution. Um, and they were very keen on the idea at the government. So my colleague Claire here, um, we did a deal with the Mongolian Post Service. It was our first government deal. And we are now in Mongolia um, doing lots of things. So that is Mongolian for those who aren't familiar with the language. It's similar to Cyrillic, but a little bit different. Um, and we now have three Mongolian words for Mongolia and the world. And to give you an idea of how this actually looks, that's actually the capital city, Ulaanbaatar. It's a bit different to how many people think uh, you've got a, uh, quite a few houses there. Um, and this is what a farm looks like in the countryside um, with a tractor. And the farmers there um, definitely appreciate something. They do have smartphones. Um, it's actually over 100% uh, smartphone-enabled country. And um, people really like a way of, of getting about. Um, what we actually do with the post service there is work with them on educating the public. So they literally go door to door with these um, slips. They write people's three words on with the app. They give them to them and actually educate people as they go. So it's a way of um, growing awareness about this new system that people can use. Um, we've even been included into the official tourist map as you get around town. Um, you can see all of the key landmarks, many of which don't show up in Google Maps. Um, you can actually just put the three words in and they give this to visitors, which is another way that people find out about what we're doing. Um, even the Airbnbs in the country um, and any Airbnb hosts, you might want to suggest doing this if you get calls going, where is it? I follow the postcode. They just put it into the description bit. If you're a what three words user, come to word, word, word. Um, and that helps people um, a lot. Um, around the town, they've got all these signs for the cafes. And people um, actually say, look, here, this is where we are. They kind of advertise it and use it as a, as a very positive thing. Even the bus stops in Mongolia have got three words in Mongolian and English to basically just say, you are here. Um, and it's, it's absolutely phenomenal. Um, again, if you're not, Mongolian is not. Uh, amazing, this is Pizza Hut Mongolia's website, uh, and it basically means if you order with what three words, we will give you free chips. Because they want to incentivize people to give their three word address so the driver doesn't spend an hour roaming around, he's lost, he wastes time, you get your pizza cold. Um, they want to be more efficient, so they, they will basically bribe you with free chips to do that. But um, it's, it's a great way of educating the public, saying here's a really good reason to try this. Um, so that's Mongolia, where we're doing Really, really amazing um, things, and we're working in now in eight other countries, um, actually with government organizations. In Tonga, this is slightly different to the Royal Mail van. This is how they deliver post um, on a solar-powered tuk-tuk. Um, and as you can see, there's a, there's a giant thing on the side which says, um, use a three-word address. They've been around the country. They, they literally um, put three words on people's houses with their permission, um, but it's a kind of way of, of doing some mass education um, there. In South Africa, um, projects in a rural place there, an NGO where um, a lot of people, they can't really dial 999 and expect an ambulance to come, so private services offer it. Um, and they said to us, look, we really want to do this at scale. Can we get a, a sign printing machine, which is basically what one of these is. Um, we have people who come from the community. They come, we help them find their house. We then engrave them a sign, um, and then they have something that they can display. Um, and the signs are actually a, a huge success. Um, we, can, we can make them for anyone. Um, the, the British Embassy in Mongolia was very keen to have one, uh, so their letterbox looks like this. Uh, the British Embassy in Cameroon then felt left out, so they asked for one too. And we now have about five British embassies who, who have their three-word address signs um, in various countries around the world. Um, Deutsche Bahn, the German railway service, um, went a bit extreme. They've actually laid out a three-meter grid by the entrance of their headquarters. Um, <laughs> And I've added a, a three-word address in German. Um, so, but they're huge fans of the uh, huge fans of the system. Um, but it's it's a fantastic endorsement if you show up at their headquarters. Um, Domino's Pizza in the Caribbean uh, cottoned on to what Pizza Hut Mongolia did first, and uh, you can now get a, a pizza in uh, St. Martin using your three-word address. Um, 
The, um, one of the most famous farms, I guess, in the UK is Glastonbury. You've got 200,000 people in a field with one postcode um, once a year. And uh, they used us for all of the operations around Glastonbury um, for medical care, for sites, loading and unloading. Um, and uh, that's, that's one of the best things it's made for is the sort of where are you at a festival that people can relate to. Um, the latest thing that we've had, which is really, really exciting, is um, a deal with Mercedes cars because a lot of car companies really struggle to get people to use that in-car satellite navigation system with the dial and the fields, and you've got to fill all the stuff in. Um, in the latest Mercedes, in a few months, uh, if you buy one, it will come as standard with what three words in it. So you just press a button on your steering wheel, speak, you say, take me to table chair, spoon, the Mercedes will understand you, and it will literally navigate you straight there. They're the first car company in the world, and they're very proud about it. And if you're a Mercedes driver, please do try it out in a few months' time. Uh, you'll see something about it. Um, this is how it looks in the, in the dashboard. They've just been exhibiting it um, at shows. Um, so just a few other things we're doing. Um, drones, uh, actually, you can't really tell a drone to go to an address because it's such a wide area, and a drone's a very specific thing. People have started to build us into drones and drone software, so you can say, look, go to this three-word address, take a photo, come back, and that's exactly what they can now, um, what they can now do. Um, so a, a bit about us, we're now uh, four years in. We have a whole bunch of press which says, wow, this is a very interesting idea, and more and more about the, the actual applications, not just the concept that we're doing around the world. Uh, we have investors uh, like Intel, uh, Horizons Ventures, which is a fund of uh, Asia's um, sort of wealthiest family, a big uh, logistics company in the Middle East called Aramex, and we're sort of assimilating investors who think, actually, this is going to be a standard that the world wants to use as we go into... Um, an age where do we really need to use addresses, which is kind of tech from the 18th century? Um, hopefully not. Um, so we, um, we're now getting more and more mainstream. This was us on the side of a Formula One car um, not so long ago. Um, great to be seen there. Um, but back to farming and uh, how we've got a couple of uses here. This is the Farmstrong Foundation in Ivory Coast, Cote d'Ivoire, who are using us um, in projects for rural communities and they use the French version, as you can see, and it's really working well for them out there. Um, I've been on the farming forum in the UK recently, um, which, uh, which has much more dialogue than I ever um, thought may, may be on there. And we've actually got some fans on there who, who literally just say to people, um, come, come and find us at uh, this person at Tractor Reporting Project. That's total coincidence. I think that Tractor's in the three-word address for that particular spot there. Um, there's another person, I won't read this out, but basically it's a story about some pig feed which was ordered and then some very lengthy descriptions and the guy went to the wrong place. Um, and then someone else interjected, um, should have used what three words, which is a great way of kind of just getting people on board with um, how this can be used in the farming community um, that we're very pleased about. Um, the, the latest thing we've just done is released an app called Three Word Photo, which people asked for. So if you've got that broken gate that needs fixing, you can go there, take a picture of it, and it instantly will pop the three words up, and you can then share that with someone. It's just easier to, um, to get it around with a picture. Um, so that's us. That's what we're doing. Um, it's massively exciting. We'd love to hear about anybody who'd, who'd like to use this in, in any application. Um, we believe we're making the world a less frustrating, more efficient, and safer place. Thank you very much. <laughs>